Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 9 of the introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last tutorial, I introduced the concept of libraries in Python. And again, libraries are collections of algorithms uh, and there are various types of libraries. For example, for image processing, you have a few selection of libraries. For data analysis, you have another set of libraries. So you import these libraries that contain a whole bunch of algorithms that are relevant to a specific type of job. For example, you import image processing library to perform some sort of an image processing task. So from the library, you're going to pull one of the relevant algorithms for that specific task. Now, who writes these? Well, good Samaritans out there, the open source community, a lot of people actually contribute towards these libraries, which is exactly why Python is amazing for scientific programming and especially for image analysis. So let me introduce the top five libraries for image analysis in this video. Now, I called it image analysis and not image processing because once you process the image, you're trying to extract information out of this image. So processing is one of the steps. So Naturally, processing is uh, one of the steps, like I just mentioned, and the two primary libraries for image processing are scikit-image and OpenCV. Okay, I have the links to uh, the relevant PyPy packages. I'm gonna actually go through the links so you can actually see exactly what I mean by the PyPy packages, okay? So for image processing, scikit-image, OpenCV, okay? And they contain, uh, in fact, this is our bread and butter. We will be using either of these or both of them in almost uh, uh, all of our videos uh, relating to image processing. Now, once the images are processed and you extract certain numbers out of it, how can you handle it? Or in the process of uh, uh, image processing, you're actually converting your image or you're treating your image as a bunch of numbers. To handle these, we have great libraries. One is called uh, NumPy. NumPy is, again, uh, it lets you handle uh, data. Pandas is also, it lets you handle data. NumPy is specifically designed for uh, numerical Python. That's what it stands for, uh, to handle arrays and lists and a whole bunch of these numbers. Again, we'll have separate uh, video tutorials on each of this topic. And finally, for plotting and visualization, and again, uh, for basic visualization, matplotlib is a, uh, almost a must for any quick visualization. I'm not talking about 3D super fancy, 4D and multi-dimensional image visualization. I'm talking about, okay, uh, we've, uh, we, we've uh, written some code. How does the histogram for the image look like? And how does the image look like before and after processing? So these type of routine tasks. So these are the five uh, libraries that is uh, the, uh, a must for any image analysis. In addition to that, of course, other uh, libraries that are worth mentioning are uh, SciPy. Again, SciPy, think of it as an extension of NumPy. NumPy is a bit limited, so SciPy actually fills that gap or extends the capabilities of NumPy. Uh, Keras and TensorFlow, again, you probably heard these terms. They are uh, used for deep learning. There are other frameworks for deep learning, but these two are uh, frameworks for deep learning. And uh, we will, if I cover this topic, that would be much later as part of this series. So uh, you can ignore this for now. Now, Seaborn and Plotly. Seaborn is completely built on top of matplotlib, but these two libraries enable us to actually perform or create advanced plotting uh, with uh, literally a few lines of code. So these are for eye-appealing plotting. And there are many other libraries. I mean, these are just a few that I'm mentioning, like, for example, CZI file. If you want to read uh, Zeiss's uh, microscope images that are in the format of CZI. CZI file can be a great one to import that and convert your image into a bunch of numbers that we can process for image processing. So these are the top five. Now, just to quickly show you uh, how they are implemented, I, I'm just going to write one line of code for each of those so you see what I mean. Now, before, uh, like I promised, scikit image PyPy. PyPy is a place where uh, let's say uh, if, if I create a library for something specific, for cell analysis, okay, I create a library, I publish it to PyPy, so you as a user can just install this entire library. How would you install that library that exists on PyPy? You just type pip install scikit image. They even made this clipboard copy to clipboard thing. You copy it, you go to your spider IDE, you paste it over there and hit enter and that package gets installed, okay? So that's how you install it. And I uh, provided links for the other one. So how do you install OpenCV Python? Just OpenCV-Python, pip install. 
NumPy is easy, pip install NumPy, pandas, and matplotlib, okay? If you don't already have. Usually, spider installation automatically would have come with all of these prepackaged. If not, you know now how to install it. So uh, let's start with scikit-image. Again, I promise just a few lines of code, uh, but you are here to learn coding. So import sk image. Now, with scikit-image and OpenCV, it's a bit little uh, tricky, I should say, or counterintuitive. We installed scikit-image, right? But I'm actually calling sk image. I don't know why they can not keep the same name, but this is how it is for scikit-image. To install it, it pip install scikit hyphen image. To use it uh, day to day in day to day coding, it's import sk image. Okay. Uh, with this, you're going to import the entire package, but typically I, I like to import only the uh, modules that I want. So from sk image, I'm going to import IO. And IO lets me uh, input, IO stands for input output. So it, it contains all the functions that are necessary to input and output images or data. So now that I have this, I can just say my image one equal to, let me go to my file explorer. I actually, let's run this. So my file, I mean, it's not gonna do anything over there, but I did that so I can see what my file name is. I called it osteosarcoma underscore zero one dot tiff. Tough name, but uh, let me try to type it. And the way you, uh, again, I'll cover reading images in a separate uh, topic altogether, but I'm just showing you how to import the library or individual modules within a library and then individual functions within that module, okay? SK image is the library, IO is the module within that library that I'm going to use, and within IO, I'm actually looking for a function called imread, and by the way, if I hit just period there, it brings up all the functions that are available as part of IO. So of this, I am going to just use imread, and now I just need to give the path to uh, the image. So my image is in images, osteosarcoma underscore zero one dot tif. If I type everything correctly when I run this, it should actually, uh, uh, you know, as you can see, it runs without an issue here. Now let me click on variable explorer. You see, image one is of size 1104 by 1376 by three. If I open it, you can see the entire uh, image actually, okay? So again, let's not worry about this for now, uh, the numbers, but I just want to show you how each library can be imported. Now, OpenCV, it's not OpenCV when you import it, it's CV2, okay? Import CV2, and let's actually make our image two equal to as you probably guessed, CV2 also has an imread functionality in addition to a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm gonna just do imread. I am read stands for image read, I guess. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste and I'll run only these two lines this time, okay? So you can see it did a great job there. Now, if you compare the numbers of image one and image two, it's the, the numbers look exactly the same except the 7 and 61 are swapped. You see 61 is here, 7 is over there, 11 is here, 54 there, 11 here, 54 here. That's because again I don't want to get into details but that's because OpenCV reads RGB, red, green, blue images as BGR. Don't ask me why but that's why, uh, that's how it is. We'll spend more time later on. Uh, now after CV2 what do I have? NumPy, right? So let's actually do import NumPy Let's actually give a shortcut. Most people do this, okay? Whenever you're dealing with NumPy, instead of typing NumPy every time, I'm just gonna type NP, that's it, okay? Now, what can we do with this? Uh, let's assign a variable A and let's create a, uh, let's create a matrix of five by five, all with ones, okay? Now, if I run these lines, you'll see that up here, if I open this, it created a five by five matrix filled with values of one. This is so easy to create these. That's why NumPy is great for uh, for data handling. Now, what else do I have? Pandas, right? So import pandas as PD. This is also very common. Instead of typing pandas every time. Again, pandas is to handle, uh, think of pandas as, uh, maybe this is a disservice calling it, but uh, think of pandas as Excel, Microsoft Excel for Python. It's not 
Excel, obviously. Uh, so the things that you do with Pandas, you can relate to how you do with uh, Excel, okay? So now what do we do here? I'm going to create a data frame. Again, I'll explain all of this whenever we get to that, uh, that, that part. And now I'm going to read a CSV file that I already have. And what did I call my CSV file? Let's go to File Explorer, image underscore measurements.csv. I am a G E measurements.csv and there you go and let's actually print out the first few uh, lines of this okay dot head and let's run these lines of code so you can see again why this is uh, does not exist what does not exist uh, file b image measurements oh sorry this is part of I stored it under a different folder. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. And you see how I have like, uh, I can open the Excel file, but, uh, or the CSV file. It has a bunch of columns uh, starting with grain number and maximum intensity, minimum in intensity and all that. So this is our uh, pandas. I know we have one more, right? So from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. You should almost memorize this line. So what I'm trying to do here is from the library matplotlib, import the module pyplot as plt. Again, plt is the shortcut for pyplot. So now I'm going to plt dot, which function do I want to use? Imshow. Just show me. Um, let's just show image one, okay? Go ahead and show me image one. So let's go ahead and plot this. There you go, that's our image. So now what we learned so far, the top five libraries, scikit-image, OpenCV, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Scikit-image, we read an image, but you can do a lot more. OpenCV, we did the same thing. NumPy, we generated an array. Pandas, uh, as you can see, we just uh, uh, handled like uh, data in CSV in an easy way. And finally, with Matplotlib, we plotted or we displayed an image. We plotted the pixels of our image, but as you can see, this is this this is quite handy. So uh, between these, again, uh, we will be, uh, I think uh, we should be okay if we can handle these five libraries for image analysis. Now, you saw how my image one, for example, let's open this and you see how my image one has a whole bunch of numbers here. Uh, and uh, in the next tutorial, let's actually see, I mean, here you can see this image is, uh, if I keep scrolling all the way, 1375, 0 to 1375 in X. So that is 1376 over there. And if I go all the way down, this is 1103, which is 1104. And I have three such channels. So this is the uh, image processing is nothing but handling a bunch of numbers. So in the next tutorial, let's actually see uh, many ways to handle these numbers. Thank you very much for your attention.